I have 15 prompts and I'm going to recommend to you some really fun books. So question one is a book you tell people is your favorite. Like maybe it's not your all time favorite, but if you're just getting to know someone and chatting small talk in real life, this is the one you say. And the book that I usually tell people is my favorite is the Scorpio Races by Maggie Steve Potter. The reason that I love telling people that this one's my favorite is because it's got an easy to explain premise. On this kind of turn of the century, kind of UK island, there are magic murder horses. And people being who they are, every year they harness these horses into an incredibly deadly race. And we are following two leads, a girl who is in serious financial trouble and decides to enter into the race as a way to try to save her family, even though her family really doesn't approve of the races, and a guy who has grown up with these horses all of his life and has a sincere passion for them, and is also very invested in winning so he can get the cash prize and finally start his own murder horse stable business. And then, of course, there's a romance. And I adore this book. Another reason that I say this one is my favorite because it's got a just recognizable enough author that if I'm talking to someone who also really knows books, then they can recognize that. And like, hats off to the creator of this tag, Steph Borer, because these questions are really good. The next question is, what is your guilty pleasure book? The book that is truly one of your favorites in your heart, but you would never say that to someone as they were asking you what your favorite book is. And for me, this is the Animorphs series. If I'm getting to know someone and they ask me what kind of books do I like to read, am I going to say Animorphs? No, because then they're going to think I haven't read a book since like 2002. But I love the Animorphs series. I'm obsessed with it. I have read it more than Scorpio Races and I have way more passion for it than that book. Yes, these books are incredibly cheesy. These books also have top-notch character arcs running through them and such fun premises and I just love every book in this series, even the really bad ones. Highly recommend the Animorph series. Question three, a book that everyone else loved but you didn't. And for me, the most recent one is Tress of the Emerald Sea. So this is about like a quiet village girl and then her crush goes off on a political errand and never comes back. So she heads off into the wider world to rescue him. This book is also very much about the world building of this world. Instead of water oceans, they have like magical evil spore oceans that are always trying to kill you. And it's a book that's just kind of on the line between epic fantasy with all like the world building and the dragons and the adventure and, and whimsical fantasy because it does have a very two reader narrator that isn't our protagonist. And it's leaning towards those like soft cozy vibes where nothing gets too scary or intense throughout the book. I thought this book was kind of annoying and mediocre and I especially hated the ending because I felt like it didn't give the awesome triumph to our protagonist where it belonged. But everyone disagrees with me because this book has a 4.5 on Goodreads. That is amazingly high. Question four, a book that you read the fastest. Now, because I track this, I can give you an exact answer of the book I read the fastest in the last year. And that award gets to go to Things You Save in a Fire. At 316 pages per day. The book is 316 pages long and I read it in a day. This book is a romance with strong emphasis on the emotional development of our protagonist. So in that way, it also leans towards women's fiction. Our heroine is a firefighter. Yes, love to see that feminism in my books. And she is very anti-relationship. She's had some trauma in her past with her mom leaving her and some bad romantic relationships. And she is done. She doesn't want any attachments. But then through a series of unfortunate events, she kind of is forced to move in with her mom. Yes, the one that she has all the emotional trauma with. And there starts her journey of rebonding with her mom and finding ways to forgive her and herself and in that way also opening herself up to opportunities of love. This book was incredibly cute and I highly recommend it. If you're looking for like an emotional healing romance with a very strong protagonist. And I could name a lot of other old books and self-published books, but I think the one I'm going to land on is The Aeronauts Windless by Jim Butcher. This is by the same author as Dresden Files, a series that gets a lot of hype and readers. But this book, I don't see it being talked about as much, and it's really good. These books are very fantasy steampunk vibes. You have magic flying sailing ships, you have laser arm cannons powered by crystals, you have talking cats, you have cat people. <laughs> 
And one of the things that I love about this book is how it juggles all of its point of views that at the beginning of the book I didn't love all of them, but by the end of the book I did love all of our characters because they all have such good development and rich inner conflicts that it's so easy to root for them and to have so much fun for these books and I'm very excited for book two, which is coming out in just a few weeks. So now is the time to jump on this bandwagon. Question six, a book that is becoming a movie TV show. This one's a little bit difficult, but an adaptation that's pretty recent is Blue Beetle, the DC movie. I haven't seen it yet. I am planning to because once upon a time I read a bunch of the comics for this Blue Beetle and I loved them. And it's about an unsuspecting teenager in El Paso, Texas, who accidentally gets like an alien technology bug fused to his spine. And this beetle is like a evil AI who always wants to kill people. So then it begins the fun dynamic between our protagonist Jaime and his AI companion as they try to actually do some good in the world and not kill innocent bystanders. Number seven, a book that you have reread the most, and that gets to go to The Host. So this is like a sci-fi alien invasion romance novel where you're from the perspective of one of the invading aliens. And these aliens, what they do is they crawl into people's brains and mind control them. So our alien has her new human body. Everything's going great until that human body starts resisting her and talking to her. And then our protagonist starts questioning whether she's really one of the good guys and kind of goes on a quest to find the last remnants of free humanity on the planet to try to better understand who they are and if they deserve their freedom. I love how this book is dabbling in a lot of different philosophical questions and questions of self and autonomy. I also enjoy the very convoluted love triangle in this book. <laughs> it's a blast. I highly recommend the host. Question eight, a book from a genre you don't typically enjoy. So a genre I rarely read or enjoy is like nonfiction memoirness, but I really did enjoy this one, which is H is for Hawk. So this book, it kind of has two parts that are intermixed. One of them is a memoir about this woman as she's struggling with grief from her father's death. And then the other one is like instruction manual of how to take care of a hawk and the philosophy of falconry and stuff. I thought this book was incredibly engaging and I enjoyed it thoroughly. Question nine, a book that deserves all the hype it gets. I want to give this to Project Hail Mary. This is a sci-fi book about an astronaut who wakes up surrounded by the corpses of his crew and he has zero memory of how he got there or who these people are. And then over the course of the book, he has to discover what his mission was and complete it. And it turns out his mission, it's pretty critical because the Earth is going through kind of an apocalypse situation and he has been sent out to try to find their solution for them. And this book just like totally nails having a scientist protagonist where you get to be with him every step of the way as he's making his discoveries without it being too overbearing for people who don't have a scientific background. This book also really well weaves in the current storyline of him alone on the spaceship and the past storyline of him as he remembers how he got on that spaceship in the first place and what led him there. I love this book and so do like everyone else. The average rating on Goodreads is incredibly high. Question 10, a book you recommend to someone when asked to give a recommendation. If someone's asking me for a random recommendation without any other genre requests, it's usually because they don't read that much and they don't know what they like. So I like to recommend something short and easy. So what I turn to is the Murderbot Diaries books. This is a series of novellas and they are so much fun and some of my favorite books of all time. This is a story of an android and its job is to protect people as they explore new planets. It's a really boring job sometimes and sometimes a really infuriating job as the people it's trying to protect don't respect it. So a little while ago, this android hacked its own programming so it doesn't have to follow orders anymore. But because it's kind of crippled with social anxiety, it just decided to keep following orders so no one would find out. And then in book one, kind of our inciting incident is when its team starts getting into real trouble and also when its team starts realizing that this robot isn't as chained by its programming as we would expect. And this series is great. It's about this character trying to find out what it really wants and also how to make friends and if that's a valuable experience. Question 11, 
a book that has your favorite characters. And this one I'm going to give to Dresden Files. This is a series about a wizard in modern day Chicago. And he does all of these little cases for people and also consulting with the police when like vampires murder someone. And he's a great, interesting, many layered character in his own right, who I love and hate all at once. But some of the real stars of the show are all of his little sidekicks. There's lots of different reoccurring characters in this series and they all kind of get their little books to shine and come along with him on his various adventures. And they also get such awesome character arcs and feel so real and vivid and fun. I would read a spin-off series about literally like any single side character in these books because they all have enough rich inner lives and involvement in all of these issues going on in the world that they could all be protagonists of their own story. And I think that really shows how awesome the characters are in this series. Question 12. A book you wish you could live in. And I'm going to give this to War for the Oaks. This is another one that I could say deserves more hype than it gets, but that's because it was like published in the 80s and has since waned in popularity. War for the Oaks is about a singer in a rock band. However, her band is falling apart, especially because her boyfriend that was in the band has recently become her ex-boyfriend. So she's leaving the band and now she's kind of adrift and wondering what she's going to do with her life when, bam, the Fae in her area come up to her and are like, hey, you've been chosen to be part of our war because we need a sacrificial mortal for that. So she's not exactly on board with this plan, but she doesn't exactly get a choice. And a lot of the book is this rumination in that setting. And her both trying to get into and understand better the rock and roll scene of 80s Minneapolis and also the Fae Courts. It's very slow and character focused and I love the vibe of this book. I would just live in it. 13. A book you thought you would hate but you ended up loving. So generally I don't pick up books that I think I'm gonna hate unless it's for a specific project. This one comes out of one of those where I read the 10 finalists of a self-published fantasy book competition. But the one that I thought I would dislike the most, but I ended up loving Miss Percy's Pocket Guide to the Care and Feeding of British Dragons. It's a book that seems very like cozy and quaint and not much is probably happening with a title like that. And generally these kind of books that feel very like cozy, I'd say don't have enough stakes and are boring. But this one, it tickled my fancy. And I think at the root of that is that it has a really strong narrative tone to it, where our narrator is always giving little quippy asides about everyone and kind of insulting every character every other page. And also what carried me through in this book is that we have a very strong character development for our protagonist, the Miss Percy, who will one day write guides about dragons, but at the beginning of the book, she's not confident enough for that. She's very much adrift in the world without drive of her own, and throughout the book she gains it, and that's really the lifeline that pulled me through this book and helped me to love it. 14. A book that made you cry. This has got to go to Divine Rivals because it's the only book that has made me cry for years now. Divine Rivals is like a World War I historical romance with the teensiest dash of fantasy sprinkled in there, where our two leads, Iris and Ronan, are both news reporters and they're kind of competing for the same promotion at work and they're both invested in this ongoing war. And then they start accidentally writing each other semi-anonymous letters through this magical typewriter, which further bonds them and also kind of propels them into getting more and more involved in that war. And I really loved the first half of this book. That's what had me crying. I do think it drops off in quality and gets kind of unfocused and loses some of its plot threads by the end. But what this book does really right is the emotions because I was crying when something bad happened to our characters and I was cheering when they started flirting a little bit, so invested in all of it. This book has that X factor that yes, has made it go viral on TikTok and also really gets at your heartstrings if you let it. Finally, question 15, a book you wish you could read for the first time again. So this has got to go to the Vorkosigan saga. Specifically, I'd love to reread for the first time again, Brothers in Arms. But the entire series follows mostly a man called Miles and he has a big chip on his shoulder, he is physically disabled, and there's a lot of prejudice in his culture against him because of that. So of course he goes off into the galaxy and gets himself in the most sticky wildest of adventures. 
If you're looking for like space adventure books, I would recommend these so strongly. I adore like every book in the series. They're all so strong and so good. And I wish that I could reread them again for the first time because like I said, these adventures get wacky. There's some really jump the shark moments in this series that work so well because of the tone they cultivated. And I would love that experience again of being able to be shocked by all of these plot twists as they're happening. And those are the 15 books that I would recommend to you. Thanks for watching.